A lot of people have asked me how to verify a car, meaning that when they're going to go buy a 1969 Z28, how do they know they're getting an original car or a good deal, or whether the car is actually a real Z28 or not? These cars are coming up in value, specifically 100% original cars. The problem is that a lot of these cars have been modified over time, like this one. This one is an original Z28, but there are some components on this car that are not correct and some that are. And we're going to go over how you can tell that at home. So the first thing that we're going to look at is the actual VIN number on this car, and it does have a V8 VIN. And what I mean by that is the first couple letters of the VIN number here, or the numbers, are 1243. Now, if this was a six-cylinder car, of course, it would say 1233. But in the middle here, we see an N. And that stands for uh, Norwood, or the Norwood Assembly Plant in Norwood, Ohio. But they also made Z28s in California at the Van Nuys plant. There would be an L in the middle of that VIN number if this was one of those cars. Now, the last thing in the VIN that's very important is going to be the serial number, or the sequence number, that comes after after the N. And this one has 6-1 here, and that tells us that this car was built in March. We're going to take a look at the cow tag to confirm that this number matches the build date on the cow tag. Now, you can get these cow tags remade, and a lot of Z28 cars have actually had their cow tags remade. That's why we want to go over all of the components to the car. This is the cow tag. The build date for the car is 03B, which would mean the third month, which would be March and then B would be the second week. That does match up with the actual VIN number of the car. So that's that's two things that are going for it for right now. This car was originally a, a Fathom green car. It did originally have a vinyl top. Now there's no vinyl top on here. All of the nipples here have been taken off for the vinyl top. J just like I said at the beginning of the video, a lot of these cars have been changed around and this car had black interior. It has the 7-Eleven um, and that's exactly what it has in here for the black interior. The reason that the build month is important is because we can actually figure out what options were standard on this car originally and what options were added to this car over time. So for example, this car you can see has front spoilers on it and it also has rear spoilers on it. Okay. The spoilers on these cars were not standard until April of 1969. This car was built in March. So this car does not have a D80 code after the X33, which D80 stands for front and rear spoilers. That's the box that they would have checked off, and that's the number that would be there. So this car did not have spoilers originally from the factory. Those have been added. The cow tag on this car, which is an X code, which means that there is an X33 right here, which would be specific for a, a Z28 with the style trim. We'll get to that here in just a second. There's a little bit more information about these cow tags that we kind of have to clear up. There are no X codes on 1969 Camaro Z28s until about mid December 1968. If your car was built after that time, then you definitely have an X code on your car. However, if it was built before then, it was either built in Los Angeles, which their tags, they don't look like this. This one's kind of like a square. The ones in Los Angeles are a lot longer and they've never had an X code on there. So that means that they're very, very difficult cars to tell whether they're real Z28 cars or not. Los Angeles cars did come with broadcast sheets or build sheets on the actual gas tank, but usually those are all corroded away. And Norwood cars, there's a few things out there that said that they they have broadcast sheets that were found in certain cars. I have never seen one of those in person or online. So if you uh, have a broadcast sheet or a build sheet for a Norwood 69Z28 car, drop us a comment below. I'd love to take a look at it and just see what it looks like. Unless you have actual dealership paperwork, there's really no way to actually tell whether your car is an original Z car or not. Now at a Norwood assembly plant built car, there would have been two X codes. So it either would have had an X33 or it would have had an X77 code. And what does that mean? So the X33 code means that it would have had the style trim package. So for example, on the X33 cars, it would have had um, the lip here would have been chrome. It would have had the gills in the side. These rocker spears were on every 69 Camaro, but on the X33 down here, this color, would this would have actually been painted black as well. And X33 369Z28 Camaros are the only Camaro Z28s that would have been hideaway headlights as well. If you have a car that has an X77 coat, but it has hideaway headlights, that would be incorrect. Also, all Z28 grills were actually uh, silver, unless it was 
an actual hideaway headlight car and then they were black. Now this car does have a, a cow induction hood on it. Now in 1969, they made about 20,000 69 Z28 Camaros. There's probably more than that today, but only 3,000 cars actually got the cow induction hood from the factory. And how do you know? It's very difficult to tell because they all have power brakes on them. Z28 cars all came with disc brakes. They all had this this boost this cylinder on it, but this is the wrong booster for this car. But if you can reach your hand down here, right above the fuse box, there would be a little hole, it looks like that. And that would be for where the switch is for the cow induction hood. Now this car does not have that hole there. So we know that this car did not have a cow induction hood from the factory. It was a flat hood car from the factory without spoilers. While we're still on this side of the car, we'll talk about the, the power steering. So for a Z28, it was actually a quick ratio steering, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So this is the, the power steering gearbox. Of course, they were the same on all Z car, or on all Camaros, actually. The pitman arm down there, that would be different for a Z28, an L78, or a Copo car, um, and that would be center to center is how you measure it, and that would be 5.8 inches long. Now also on a Z car, because they had power brakes from the factory, they would also have a proportion valve that would be under the driver's seat that's right here. Now that doesn't mean that it was a Z28. All that that means is that this car had disc brakes from the factory and a 12 bolt rear end, which was required by a Z28. So it's good to see that on here. Remember, it looks like Texas. The last thing that we're gonna talk about on this section of the car is actually gonna be the tack. A lot of people think that tacks were standard in Z28s, and they were in May of 1969. Now, this car was built in March of 1969, and it has a tack in it, but I'll be able to tell whether this car had a tack originally from the factory or not. Now, it's gonna be hard to see on camera, but all you have to do is below the fuse box, there will be a hole, there'll be a hole down here with the actual, well, there's not a hole here because this car didn't have a tack from the factory, but if it did, there would be a hole right below the fuse box for the tachometer to run down to the transmission and basically figure out how fast or how many RPMs the car is receiving. The owner of this car does have the original engine. No, this is not the original 302 that came in this car. And we'll take a look at what an original 302 DZ motor looks like here in just a moment. But if we are to go to this side of the car, all Z28s came with a fuel line that's 3 8 of an inch thick. They didn't come with two fuel lines. And this is about the size of exactly what it, what it should look like. Now remember that this car was not an original spoiler car from the factory, but if your car was an original spoiler car from the factory, remember it has to have been built after April of 1969. If it was built before that, it would say D80 on the actual cow tag itself. But if it was an original front spoiler car, it would have a hole right here under the subframe for the bracket that runs from here to here to brace this actual spoiler so that when you're going down the highway, this doesn't actually just go underneath the car from, from the wind. This car didn't have the spoiler from the factory, so there is no hole right here in the subframe. So all 1969 Z28s came with dual exhaust from the factory, and an easy way that we can tell is if the doubler plate is behind the rear tire here on the driver's side. It's pretty difficult to see in there. Um, but uh, you can see the corner of it. All Z28s came with dual exhaust, but not all Z28s came with chambered dual exhaust. That was a standard option up until about November of 1968. After about the spring of 1969, it was, it was not available on any of the cars after then. Coming around the back end here, there's a few things that we can learn about this car from the tail. And all Z28 cars came with the big bumperettes. Now, the regular cars had the small bumperettes, but the Z28s had the big bumperettes. These cars were made for the Trans Am series. That's why they have a 302 in them, just like the Mustang Voss 302. That was the cubic inch that was allowed for racing. And I've heard stories where the reason that the, the bumperettes on a 69Z car are big is because when they would race them and the, they would break down on the track, that's actually where they would push up against to push these cars off the track. Now, I've also heard that because these cars sat with the back end down originally from the factory, that they wanted to make them longer just for more protection for the rear end. Not sure if that's either of those are 100% correct, but they, they do make sense. Now, we know that this car did not come with a rear spoiler from the factory, so it originally would have had stripes 
that came down this car and they would have gone the whole way onto the end of this uh, this trunk lid here. This, this spoiler would not have been here. However, this is actually painted correct for a spoiler from the factory. In other words, if you had a, a D80 code on your actual cow tag or if your car was built after April of 1969, spoilers were manda mandated, this is the way that they were painted. So the actual trunk lid itself did not have the stripe on it back here but the spoiler did this car coming from the factory with no spoiler on it it would have been painted in this section right here and then the dealer could have added a spoiler on top of it so this both of these would have been painted but this is correct from the factory the way that it should be not for this car but for a d80 spoiler car now underneath the car here we can see that we do have the the 12 volt rear end which would be correct now the numbers for this 12 bolt are on the other side of this actual piece right here. They're on, on that side. Um, but they would say either one, they would say a couple different things. So the standard 12 bolt that came on a Z28 would be a BO code. It would be a, a 373 non-posi gear. However, they're pretty rare. Not very many people ordered those. The common one is to see a BU on the other side of that. And that would be your 373 posi gears, which also would have came with stickers and um, in the trunk and then it would have had a tag on the actual unit itself and then also a lot of people chose the 410 gears which would be a bv um, code um, but this one this one's just a bu code nothing nothing too crazy about that this has five leaf springs um, there is one known z28 camaro that is documented having five leaf springs um, but most of them if not all of them came with four um, from the factory so these aren't these aren't correct but no harm a couple more things while we're while we're back here a lot of people think that the actual holes that are drilled for the emblem on the tail pan of a camaro are different depending on what camaro you had it doesn't matter if these are ss z28 or the blue bow tie logo the holes that are in the rear tail pan here are the same for every every camaro also because this is a x33 z28 and not an x77 remember this one has the style trim package it has the chrome that comes down the middle of the rear taillights right here one other thing about this car probably not on this car but we have to know about when we're talking about verifying a z28 camaro is the actual torsion rods or the torsion bars that are that run down here for the for the actual spoilers. The trunk weighs a little bit more, so the torsion bars back here have to be thicker. So if this was an original Z28 spoiler car from the factory, it would have one thin bar and it would also have one thick bar back here. Most of the time when you see a Z28, which did not have spoilers from the factory that have been added, um, that they don't reproduce the actual thick bar. Um, so most of the time you just see them and it just has two thin bars back here. But if your car does have the thick bar and the thin bar, then we know that that was an original Z28 spoiler car. Even if it doesn't have the D80 tag on the front, it was robbed or something like that. So we'll step inside here to this car and it's pretty, I mean, it's a very, very nicely restored car. We see we got the, the rosewood steering wheel here. It didn't have a tack originally from the factory, but we can see that there's been one installed. Um, the console gauges are here. It doesn't have AC. Uh, Z28s never came with AC from the factory, and that would be the way that this one's represented as well. The one thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about is not really something that we're going to be able to see on camera. Stay right here. I'm going to go around to the other side. If your car was built in Norwood, Ohio, meaning that it has an X code, they actually marked behind the rear seat whether this car was a Z28 or a big block car. Now, it's not something that we're going to see in the video here today, but right here, right here where my hand is, on the actual metal behind this seat, there would be an X7 or an X3, depending on what car this was. So this was an X33 from the factory, so there would be an X3 back there in either yellow I've seen them in green, I've seen them in blue, just depending on what grease pen that they used that day. But if you're finding one of these and it's not restored or something like that, or you're just not 100% sure, um, if it was built in Norwood, that's the way you would check right there. So if we take a look, this car does have uh, American Racing torque thrusts on it, which would not be correct for a Z28. They would have had rally wheels from the factory. We'll take a look at a set here in just a second. The reason I'm bringing that up is because Z28s came with a tire sticker that came with the correct tire size on them. In other words, regular Camaros came with 14 inch tires or 14 inch rims. Z28s came with actually 15 inch rims. They would have had a, a sticker that went in the door 
right here that would be white and it would have 15 um, by four on here because there's four tires of course and it would tell you how much to inflate the tire a z28 and 68 that sticker would have actually been inside the glove box but in 69 they moved it to here the second thing is is this door this is the driver's side door and in 1969 in august they actually switched doors in other words they were required to actually put a certification sticker right here so if your c28 was built after 1969 august 1969 your door would not look like this on the inside it would have a sticker up here that's white and it would actually have a blue sticker with two uh, tabs that are pressed into the door that come out right here for the sticker to sit in between. That's one thing that a lot of people don't know about Camaros, but the doors were different August on. So the Camaro we were just looking at doesn't have rally wheels on it, but I wanna show you guys what rally wheels look like. So these are, this is a Chevelle, of course. These are the rally wheels. Now these wheels wouldn't be on a Z28. They don't have the correct code on here, but the correct code for a car up until about mid-December would be AD. And what I mean by that, there's a code right here on this side of the valve stem that says XB on this car, or XD, but on a Z28, they would be 15 inch rims and they would say AD. In December, that's when they started building the JL8 disc brake cars, which had the disc brakes in the back and in the front. They only made about 206 of them, but because they started to make those cars, they had to change the wheels for the Z28s to YH code wheels. So if your car was built after mid-December 1968, your car would have received wheels that would say YH on them. They look just like every other rally wheel out there, but they're 15 by sevens and they're pretty expensive. So if you see one of these that have YH on them at your local flea market, go ahead and pick them up because they're worth a couple bucks. So one of the last things that I want to show you guys is just how to authenticate the motor on a 69 Camaro. Now remember in 1968, that was the year that they mandated that you had to put partial VIN numbers on components of the car for insurance reasons. So like the motor, the transmission, it's gonna be kind of hard for us to show you how to verify the transmission uh, VIN on this car, but we'll do it on the engine. So I just want you to see that the last three digits are six, six, seven, three for this car. So remember six, seven, three. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll go to the, uh, the motor, uh, remember that this motor is not to this car. He has it sitting over here in one of his sheds. We'll go over and take a look at that right now and see if the numbers match. So the motors for, for a Z28 had a lot of specific parts on it that are only for Z28s in general. In other words, they had Holly carbs on them um, that have certain numbers that are correct. These valve covers are correct for a 69Z car. They're the same as a Corvette for a 69. The Corvettes were chrome. The, the valve covers for a Z28 were not chrome. They were dull, kind of like this color right here should be. This is the correct intake uh, for this car. The reason we know that is if uh, I can get my camera guy over here. There's a an emblem right here on this side. That would be a, a Winters emblem for the Winters foundry. That was only on a Z28 in, in 1969. Let me see if I can get this cardboard moved. There we go. This is the front of the, the front of the car. Okay, this is the, the front passenger side. Well, what we're looking at here is the actual pad. This is the front pad of the car. It does say DZ here at the end, and it does have the date code in here. Let me see if I can read the date code. Just step back for a second. No, it's not looking like I can make those letters out. I can make out the DZ though. However, what's more important though, is it was stamped. And right here on the front of the pad, the last three letters are 673, and those match the uh, se sequence number or the serial number for the car out there. Now there's also one other place you can check for numbers on this motor, and we're not gonna be able to look at it, but the actual uh, filters for these cars are on the driver's side over here, and on the side of the block, on the driver's side, on the on the side of the block, on that side, uh, would have the actual VIN number stamped for the car as well. So we know that this is the 302 DZ motor that came out of that Z28 Camaro. So that pretty much sums up everything that you kind of need to know about a 69 Z28 car. If you want to verify one or make sure that it's a real car that you're about to buy or looking at, or maybe just the one you have at home. If you guys have any questions or anything like that, just ask me in the comments below. I'll read them. I'll respond to them. I love talking about Camaros. If you like this video and kind of want to spread the knowledge of Z28s to more people, just give us a, a thumbs up on the video. Other than that, again, my name is Parker with Backyard Barn Finds and have a great day.